Welcome to another tutorial. This time we create a very simple asset pipeline. In a game we want to be able to import textures for example. And I thought it would be cool if let's say we start the game and then we have textures and we could just drag and drop these onto the window and they would be automatically converted into the file format that we want and we could then use them in the code. So this is what we are going to do today. Remember that you need to be on the branch 10 asset pipeline the link will be in the description to enable drag and drop in our window we need to handle the message which is a message that sends from the window so in our win32 platform cpp file in the platform window callback we have to add a case here wm drop file or wm drop files let me add a break here as well this event will trigger when something is being dropped into the window not when something's hovering over it but when we actually drop it how this works we have to define what is called h drop and i call this drop that is h drop you can read that from the w param if you like what i do consider tuning into my twitch i stream at 10 a.m central eastern time which is 1 a.m pacific daytime if you want to directly support me you can do so via patreon this will give me more time to work on my game cakes today and you will get reading access to the github repository patreons will also be called out at the end of every video subscribing and leaving a like also helps a lot thank you very much for your support after that we need to query how many files we actually dropped and I like to do it this way, un32t file count is, and then we call a function called drag query file a. A stands for ANSI, if you remember. It takes in the drop. This will be an index if we dropped multiple files. Since we do not know how many files we actually dropped, we have to first get the file count, and therefore we need to define an un invalid index. And I happen to know that the invalid index that we defined, which is the, let me go back here, the maximum number of a UN32T is exactly the same index as Windows expects, which is OX F F F F F F F F A times F. And then we need a long pointer to a file name, which we do not need. And the last one is actually the length of the file name, uh, which we don't know either. So that will be zero. Now we know how many files we have, and then we do a simple for loop un32 degree i is zero i is less than file count i plus plus and for every single file we call the same function again this time we call this file name length now we actually use the index which is i if we supply an index this function returns us the length of the file name and then we define a character file path array i like to call an array give it 500 characters windows has like something i think 260 plus or something or at least at most 260 so 500 should cover most of the cases don't forget to initialize that to zero and then we call this function again drag query file a takes in the drop of course the index now the file path and the file name length plus one the reason why we do plus one here is because it i think it does not include the null terminator but i had problems with file name length but i don't remember exactly why if anyone remembers why we need a plus one can let me know down in the comments and there is a reason what we now have in our file path is the location of the file from where it was dragged from we now want to take that path in and call textconf our converter if you remember textconf we use that to convert our very first png file to a dds file then long story short the dds file is a gpu ready file which is uncompressed data that we can just then simply use in our renderer and we don't need to convert anything and since we're dealing with pixel art here having uncompressed data is not as much of a problem as it would be in a 3d game for example so yeah i like to define a new character command and i think 300 uh, worked well so far so i'll keep to that and i guess I'll also include a local scope here. Convert file to DDS and copy into assets folder. So for that, we need a command and then we need to invoke this command by calling system. Let me center this a bit. System in C++ takes in the command. If you remember from the shader utils that we wrote in an earlier tutorial, we do the same thing here. I will also do a cakes assert in case something goes wrong. Remember, system returns an integer value. And if that integer value is zero, it will be an error. So we have to check against not zero. Not sure why that is. In case the command did not properly execute, we want to assert here. So hold the program and say failed to import asset. And then we provide a percentage s for a string file path. Now we need to make sure that the command is properly filled. And I like to call sprintf. 
for that. Takes in the command, buffer, and a format string. That format string will be the path to our textconf.exe, which is in lib backslash backslash textconf. Dot exe. Then we specify arguments. Minus Y means we overwrite any existing files. Minus M and 1 means we want to generate one MIP level. We are doing pixel art, right? Minus F means the format, which is R8 G8 B8 A8 underscore UNOR. And then we type in the actual file name, the percentage S in quotes. So we have to ex escape those quotes. The file name could potentially on Windows contain white spaces. And so we need to put this in quotes here. And then we specify an output path, which would be assets slash textures. That is the format string. And of course, we need to supply the file path to it. And that's more or less everything we need to do to drag and drop files in and then have them converted. Quickly check if that builds. It's telling us drag file query A is not implemented. Unresolved external symbol. If we want to use that, we need to link against another library from windows so we go to lib.bat in the link line we also link against shell32.lib not sure why that is a capital s here windows then it should be able to compile which looks good can try to run real quick if it still works now drag and dropping will still not work because we have not enabled that on the window if we want to enable drag and dropping we go back to our win32 platform file into create window and right before we show the window we need to call a little function and i like to put this into a debug thing if dev debug and if because this is something that we will use when developing the game but we won't be using it when we are actually shipping it right so i want to use this only on debug so we need to call drag accept files takes in a window and if we want to accept them true of course we want please so now try that again run the program so specifically for the tutorial i created a pedal and a ball which is basically a face with an open mouth and i have put them here in the folder drag and dropping them in and it should have now created those two DDS files. So if we go back to Pong from scratch on the left side here, it should have created a ball DDS file and a pedal DDS file next to the cakes DDS file in the folder textures under assets. So now we can actually access those. In order to do so, we need to switch to assets.cpp and tell it what to load depending on which asset type. For example, the cakes should no longer be cakes, but I want this to be the ball DDS. And I want to call the asset ball as well. Also, I want to add another case here and call that asset a pedal. And of course, we load the pedal. Let me quickly yank those two. And then we switch to assets.h and replace cakes with ball and paste in the pedal like so. Now we have a pedal and a ball. And at this point, I want to show you an error that I, for some reason, still have in my program. In the Vulkan renderer, so switch to that, to the function vk create descriptor, this big one here, I still had the asset sprite cakes hard coded when I get an image. This has to be the asset type ID. For some reason, I managed to add that back into this branch. And so I apologize if this was confusing, uh, but that should finally fix it. And on another note, there's another bug. When we do platform read file and we create the file by calling create file A, we also need to make sure that if we successfully created a file, we close the handle to it. Otherwise, we never release and no one can access the file as long as the program is running. And therefore, we can never access files again and overwrite them. Now, back in our game, I want to make use of these pedals and the ball. So init game will now completely be destroyed and we build that up again. I want to create two pedals and one ball. In order to do so, I just need to define an entity pointer E to be what the result of create entity is. That takes in the game state, of course. And then we have to define a transform and I would like to also define a couple of floats, which would be pedal size in X. And I think I'll put this to 50.0F. Then I want to have a pedal size in Y, make that twice as big and the ball size to be 50.0F, like so. Now, when I create an entity, which is supposed to be a pedal, I need to define the position. The left pedal will be a 10.0F from the screen and 10.0F down. Then it takes in the pedal size X and the pedal size Y. Now that result needs a material and I want to call get material uh, game state with an asset type ID. 
and that asset will be the asset right pedal this entity will be a pedal and that will be enough to create the first pedal now we need the second one I'll just copy this now the x position is kind of a problem because it will be different depending on the screen width and the screen width or the screen size is defined in win32 platform.cpp over here where we create the window we just hard code these positions i will still keep them hard coded for now if you want you can abstract those into parameters to the function and then maybe have i don't know a file or whatever you want i'll keep them here for now because i'm actually quite lazy so uh, i'll do that later <laughs> so yeah uh 1000 and we need to make sure that the right pedal is on position 1000 minus the size right because we have them right aligned the position basically states where the entity will be drawn if this is the position it will be drawn this way right and if it's like at the exact edge of the screen it will be drawn outside so we need to do minus the pedal size x and i want to have a padding of 10 and i know that the way we created the window window let me show you real quick when we create a windows window there is what is called a client rectangle this rectangle over here is actually the window size it is not the window size does not include the top part of the heading so the client rect is actually everything that is yellow so doing minus 10 here might not be 100 correct but we'll still try and see how that looks and then of course the last thing we need to create a ball that will be the asset sprite ball and takes in the ball size of course two times like so and i guess the position on x will be divided by two and put this 400 down and of course i have a redefinition of my entity remove the entity pointer part from all of those entities try building that again should be okay and now we have a pedal on the left a pedal on the right and a ball in the middle and of course that offset here is not correct so i tried that out a bit and minus 20 works better could try test that out real quick looks a bit better but not perfect and so next time we will fix the client rect of the window if you want you can actually do that yourself as well but now this is quite boring right i want to change more i want to also make sure that i can only control the left pedal how do i do that if i have generic entities and i thought of a way to do this quite simply by adding an enum components put a semicolon here this enum will store component underscore ball the left pedal like so and the right underscore pedal but there's a twist an entity can be many components at once at least i want to have that like transform component sprite component whatever component right so i define a un32t component mask on the entity this component mask will reference certain bits so i want to have for the component ball for example i want to set the bit one and the bit two and the bit three i take the number one the first bit and i shift it up by whatever many places so i want to add a macro to defines.h open that defines.h and then add a define bit takes in a number and bit shifts that number up by however many indices i guess we can do i here so yeah, that macro will bit shift up and so back in our game cpp we can define these components at different types of bits and then we can assign these bits by calling functions let's go below game state center this a bit and define an internal bool has underscore component this function takes in an entity pointer e and a component c a component and all it does is check e component mask and that is a bitwise and it compares every single bit and if two bits are one it returns a number let's say we have 10 bits there's different bits set in any of these arrays and if two slots have the same bit set to one this function returns true so we end this with c and of course we return that this is the has component function we also want to add a component to an entity and we want to remove one so i guess i'll copy this again in order to add a component to an entity we just need to or equals the component mask and we don't need to return here and also the bool is a void make sure you change those two we just or the bits together or means if the bit is set in either of one of those two arrays it will result in an array that has 
all the bits set. And then removing a component is a bit more complicated. First of all, let's remove the bool here and turn that into void. We have to end the component mask with the component, but not the component, the inverse of the component. And we'd return a thing, of course. We basically, and I like to put a comment here to make this more clear. We end with not C. This turns all bits to one, except for the one bit that C references. The component C has one bit set in the entire array. And if I invert that, all the bits are set except for the one bit. And if I then add this together with my entity bit mask, it will result in everything but the one bit that this component was referencing. And this is how we can remove a component. Now we go back to init game and we need to make sure that the entity on the left, the left pedal can be controlled. So I want to add a component to E. That is the component underscore left pedal, right? And I want to also add the component right pedal to the other one, like so, and the component underscore ball to the ball. Now we can differentiate between those. And that is very helpful because in the update game, I guess I'll keep the A and D keys and because I will be using them. The rest can go. Actually, we can keep the loop as well. And I guess the velocity can be kept as well. Call that velocity. And I think 10 was a good number. Again, we still don't have delta time. And if you want, implement delta time as a homework for the next tutorial. Because in the next tutorial, we'll actually do that. I'll give you a single tip. I'm pretty sure you can do that yourself though. It takes in a float DT, delta time. The update game, if you want a small tip. So when we update our entities, we can check if has component right e uh, component left pedal well then we can check if a simple key is down like for example the w key or the s key we yoink the position here boom we set the transform y position plus the velocity and let's see w moves up and therefore we need to remove velocity and if s moves down then we need to add velocity again y going down increases uh, let me quickly make sure that this stuff is deleted and we need to add equals here plus equals looks like i accidentally destroyed a brace so would be better yep so if we have the left pedal w and s key should move it let me quickly check build and we'll run whoa that was too quick that was too quick way too quick lol that has to be like one or maybe even 0.01 let me do 0.01 lol <laughs> that was way too quick yeah, yeah, that's better. Okay, that is much better. Now, we don't have any collision. And if you want, you can play around with this. But this will allow you to create a ball that bounces off the edges over time. Or a player on the right side that is following the ball. Which is what we'll do the next time. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to show you. Actually, let me change the background real quick of the window. Because I think yellow is quite boring. Uh, the clear color here. I'll put this to black. I think it's easier to see the game in black than it is in yellow. I like that a bit more. Now you can decide what clear color you have. I will stay with black now because I think it's better. So yeah, that's all I wanted to show you. Thank you very much for watching. I will now do the git stuff. Git add. Git commit. No, 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 no. Git checkout minus B 11 underscore delta time. It will be more. I know it, it will be more, but that should be fine. Switch to branch, git add dot, git commit minus m, edit a simple way to import git push minus u origin 11 underscore delta underscore time. Like always, that is where we will begin the next time. So thank you all for watching. I hope you liked it and uh, see you in the next one. <laughs>